Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a pressing and critical topic that's affecting millions across the United States and beyond, the current heat waves and their widespread impact. From dangerous temperatures in the South and Plains to the severe flooding in the Midwest, let's explore how this extreme weather is shaping lives and the environment. To start off, dangerous heat is expected to sweep across the South and Southern Plains early this week, bringing temperatures into the mid to upper 90s. Some areas like Dallas and Little Rock could even see highs reaching 100 degrees. The heat index, which combines temperature and humidity to reflect how hot it feels, might climb above 110 degrees in some regions. This level of heat poses significant health risks, particularly for those without access to adequate cooling. In southern Minnesota, the Rapidan Dam is under threat due to recent flooding. The Blue Earth County Emergency Management has warned that the dam is in an imminent failure condition. While the dam was intact as of late Monday morning, water was flowing around it, posing a severe risk to nearby communities. Evacuation orders have not been issued yet, but the situation remains critical. Moving on to the flood-stricken communities, areas like northern Iowa, southern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska, and northern Missouri and Kansas are under heat advisories. These regions, already grappling with the aftermath of heavy rains and flooding over the weekend, now face additional challenges with the rising temperatures. President Joe Biden has approved a major disaster declaration for Iowa, underscoring the severity of the situation. Over the weekend, several cities experienced record-breaking heat. From New York to Mississippi, high temperature records that stood for over a century were shattered. Philadelphia, for instance, reached 98 degrees on Sunday, breaking its 1888 record of 97 degrees. Similarly, Greenville, Mississippi, and Raleigh, North Carolina, hit a record 100 degrees. Fortunately, cooler temperatures are expected to provide some relief starting this week. South Dakota has also been severely affected, with at least one reported death due to flooding. Governor Christy Noem emphasized the dangers of floodwaters and urged residents to stay away from flooded areas. Emergency personnel in Sioux Falls reported multiple rescues from rising waters and stranded vehicles, highlighting the ongoing threat in the region. As of now, more than 20 rivers in South Dakota, Iowa, and southern Minnesota are at major flood stages, which could lead to extensive flooding of buildings, roadways, and other critical infrastructure. The National Weather Service has issued flood warnings, and the number of affected river gauges is expected to rise as more water flows into major rivers. In the southwest, monsoon-like conditions are anticipated due to the influx of tropical moisture from Tropical Storm Alberto. While this could aid firefighters battling wildfires, excessive rain could also lead to flooding and debris flows, complicating efforts to contain the fires. The heat wave is expected to move into the southeastern and south-central U.S., pushing temperatures 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Cities from southern South Dakota to the southeast could see highs in the upper 90s and low 100s. Atlanta is forecasted to reach the upper 90s on Tuesday and Wednesday, which is about 10 degrees above normal for this time of year. By midweek, the heat will briefly return to some of the areas in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast that experienced extreme temperatures last week. Although not as severe as before, temperatures in the upper 90s and low 100s are anticipated, with a few daily high temperature records at risk. For those in the Midwest, there will be rain chances for heavily flooded areas most of the week. Severe thunderstorms could bring additional heavy rainfall, exacerbating the flooding situation. The heaviest storms could dump more than an inch of rain in a short period, enough to cause further flooding in already saturated areas. Now, let's discuss some of the recent tweets and social media updates that have been circulating about the current weather conditions. A tweet from a local news station in Dallas highlighted the upcoming heat wave, urging residents to take precautions such as staying indoors during peak heat hours and staying hydrated. Another tweet from the National Weather Service warned of the imminent failure condition of the Rapidan Dam and advised residents in the surrounding areas to stay alert and prepared for possible evacuation. A tweet from a health organization in Iowa emphasized the importance of checking on vulnerable individuals, particularly the elderly and those with health conditions, during the extreme heat. 
Here are some frequently asked questions regarding the heat waves and their impact. Q1. What are the health risks associated with extreme heat? A1. Extreme heat can cause heat-related illnesses such as heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Symptoms include heavy sweating, weakness, dizziness, nausea, and in severe cases, unconsciousness. It's important to stay hydrated, avoid strenuous activities, and seek air-conditioned environments. Q2. How can I stay safe during a heat wave? A2. To stay safe, stay indoors during the hottest parts of the day, drink plenty of water, wear light-colored and loose-fitting clothing, and never leave children or pets in a parked car. Q3. What should I do if I live near the Rapidan Dam? A3. Stay informed by following updates from local authorities. Prepare an emergency kit and have a plan in place in case evacuation orders are issued. Q4. What is the heat index and why is it important? A4. The heat index is a measure of how hot it feels when humidity is factored in with the actual air temperature. It's important because high humidity can make it harder for the body to cool down, increasing the risk of heat-related illnesses. Q5. Are there any cooling centers available in affected areas? A5. Many cities set up cooling centers during extreme heat events. Check with local government websites or news outlets for information on the nearest cooling center. Q6. How can I help those affected by the flooding and heat waves? A6. Consider donating to local relief organizations, checking on neighbors who may need assistance, and volunteering with local community groups. Q7. What are the long-term impacts of such extreme weather events? A7. Long-term impacts can include damage to infrastructure, increased health care costs, and displacement of residents. Climate change is also likely to increase the frequency and intensity of such events. Q8. What precautions should be taken for pets during extreme heat? A8. Ensure pets have access to fresh water and a cool place to rest. Avoid walking them during peak heat hours and never leave them in a parked car. Q9. How does flooding increase during heat waves? A9. Flooding can increase if heavy rainfall occurs on saturated ground, as the soil cannot absorb more water, leading to runoff and rising water levels in rivers and streams. Q10. What role does climate change play in these extreme weather events? A10. Climate change contributes to the increased frequency and severity of extreme weather events, including heat waves and heavy rainfall, by altering atmospheric conditions and increasing global temperatures. As we conclude, it's clear that extreme weather events like these heat waves and flooding are becoming more frequent and intense, underscoring the need for preparedness and effective response strategies. Remember to stay safe, stay informed, and take care of yourselves and your loved ones during these challenging times. For more updates and detailed information, make sure to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for watching.